going to show you how to prepare the cauliflower for the cauliflower toast. So this is a small cauliflower. It's about two pounds. I'm going to take off all the greens. Don't want to eat those. And just pull the rest off. OK. So what most people do is they cut it right through the top. You end up with like a flat plane, which isn't very pretty. What I do is turn it over and cut out the core and then pull the florets apart. Four tablespoons of olive oil. This really needs a lot of olive oil. You'll see it just gets absorbed by the cauliflower. A little bit of red pepper flakes, like a quarter of a teaspoon. You don't want to burn people. <laughs> you just want a little underlying heat. Teaspoon of salt. Sprinkle it on. Just toss it together. To roast the cauliflower, I'll put it in a 400 degree oven, tossing it from time to time. And after 30 minutes, when the florets are tender and randomly browned, I'll take it out and let it cool. So the cauliflower's cooled, and then I'm gonna put it in a big bowl and add some really delicious things. First, I'm gonna add 12 ounces of room temperature mascarpone, which is really like cream cheese. It's Italian cream cheese, but it's a little richer. Six ounces of Gruyere. It's grated in long shreds. Just add the whole thing together. I've got four ounces of prosciutto. And what I'm going to do is julienne it. I've stacked them all up. I'm just going to put that right in. Just try and break it up so you don't get big pieces of prosciutto, just little shreds. And then salt and pepper, one teaspoon of salt. Now, the thing about salting is you want to salt all the way through, a little bit at a time, and half a teaspoon of pepper. And that way, things don't taste salty. They just taste perfectly seasoned. And then I'm going to put a little nutmeg in, which is sort of classic when you make gratins, like with cheese. Just a quarter of a teaspoon. Gives it a little extra hit of flavor. OK, I'm going to toss it all together. This is why the mascarpone has to be room temperature. Otherwise, it won't mix in. I want to make sure it's really well mixed. Next is the toast. So I took a big boule, like one of those big round breads, country bread, and it's got a firm texture. If you use like a white bread, it's just going to be too soft and it won't hold the cauliflower. And I'm just going to pile the cauliflower right on top of it. OK, I want to get lots of it on. Maybe a little sprinkle of paprika on it. Just give it a little color, a little heat. OK, that's one. So that's all six cauliflower toasts. I'll put them under the broiler for about three minutes, watch them really carefully so they don't burn. Mmm, I can smell cauliflower and cheese. Oh, these look so good. They're like crispy on the top and all the melted cheese. Fantastic. So I'm going to put them on a platter. I always do like a square platter if I have something with rounded edges. Just somehow it looks better. So I'm going to put a few more things on top. A little fresh chive. I love to do this on the platter so the garnish kind of falls on the platter. You know what everything is. Parmesan cheese, a little spiciness. I mean, that really does make it look better. And a little sea salt. Wow, this looks amazing. I mean, that's a way to take a very lowly vegetable like a cauliflower and make it into something really luxurious and delicious. I think I may have to steal a little piece of cauliflower. Mmm, it's sweet, it's creamy, the cheese is amazing. You really can taste the chive. That's a delicious appetizer. Gratins are terrific. Potato gratin. I like to make zucchini gratin. But for this dinner, I'm going to make cauliflower gratin. So I've got a three-pound cauliflower. I'm just going to cut it up into florets. OK. Big pot of boiling salted water. That's just going to boil for about five or six minutes until the cauliflower is just tender. In the meantime, I'm going to make a delicious white sauce. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up two cups of milk. In the meantime, I'm going to grate some cheese. I need about three quarters of a cup of Gruyere. About half of the cup is going to go into the sauce, and then I'm going to put some on top. It gets all brown and delicious. OK. So about two tablespoons of butter. OK, three tablespoons of flour all at once. So I'm just going to cook the flour and the butter together. It actually becomes like a paste. I'm just going to pour the milk right in. Whoa, really hot. And then just stir this, and you'll see it really thickens up so it's a really good white sauce. 
Oh, it's really nice and smooth now. Actually, you can see it really coats the back of the spoon nicely. Okay, it's thick enough. I'm just gonna turn it off the heat and add some great flavor. First is salt. I need a teaspoon of kosher salt. Half a teaspoon of pepper. And the next thing is really classic French spice. So a quarter of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And then lots of delicious Gruyere cheese, about a half a cup. And I add Parmesan. It's not so classic for French gratins, but it gives it a nice nutty flavor. About a half a cup of grated Parmesan. And then to stir it together. Oh, it smells so good. You can really smell the, the nuttiness of the Gruyere and the spicy Parmesan and even the nutmeg. Okay, that's done. I think the cauliflower is ready. Nice steam bath. <laughs> and this is the gratin dish I'm gonna use. It's about eight by 11, but it doesn't have to be exact. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put about a third of the sauce in the bottom. It even looks like it has a lot of flavor, doesn't it? And then the cauliflower. And then the rest of the sauce. That actually looks good already, but I'm gonna make a nice crumb topping so it gets brown and crusty. It's gonna be so good. Okay, so I need a little bit of butter. So it's a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs, a quarter of a cup of Gruyere. I'm just gonna mix this together. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top. And then just drizzle it with a little bit of butter. Never hurt anything. And I'm just gonna leave that to room temperature and I'm gonna refrigerate it and bake it just before the party. Cauliflower gratin. Oh, this smells so good. It's a party. I have to admit, I didn't always love cauliflower. But then I discovered roasting it changed my mind completely. And then I started roasting it with Parmesan and Gruyere cheese. Hmm, that made it even better. <laughs> so I have this section on my website called Ask Ina, and people send in the most interesting questions. And recently somebody said, how do you cut a cauliflower so it doesn't get all over the kitchen? And I thought, why does the cauliflower get all over the kitchen? And I realized what they were doing is they were cutting it through the top, like this. If you cut it in slices like that, you get cauliflower all over your kitchen, and it's a mess. But this is what you want to do. I'm clearing off the mess first. You take the cauliflower, cut off the bottom, because you don't want the green parts. And then instead of cutting it through the top, what you do is cut it through the bottom, is take out the core with a small knife, just like this. And then instead of cutting it through the top, what I do is I cut it through the stem and then just pull it apart. And then you don't have cauliflower all over your kitchen. It's a lot of cauliflower. I'm just gonna toss them on a sheet pan. I need lots of olive oil because I want it to brown really well. Just pour it on. Lots of salt, I want it to taste great. And pepper. And just toss it all together. This is gonna cook at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. I'm just gonna toss it once right in the middle, just to make sure it browns really evenly. Okay, ready for the oven. Well, I actually have one in the oven, and it smells like it's just almost done. Oh, this looks great, doesn't it look fantastic? So I have two kinds of cheese that I'm gonna put on it. I have a cup of Gruyere. Cheese makes everything taste better, right? And a cup of Parmesan. So this goes back into the oven for two minutes just till the cheese melts. You know, I think we all remember our grandmothers cooking vegetables until they were soft and mushy. And then we started blanching them so they were a little crisp. But I have to say, once you go to roasting vegetables, you never go back again. Put something in the oven, set a timer, forget about it, and you have the most delicious vegetables you can possibly imagine, like roasted cauliflower with chopped parsley, parmesan and gruyere. Isn't that delicious? So good.